overall, we are going to get an integral from zero to infinity of x. Oh, that's such a beautiful integral sign, seriously. I'm so good at drawing integral signs. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. We are back at Putnam stuff, integration. And we are going to deal with Infinity Boys today. That's why I'm wearing the Infinity Boy merch right here. Make sure to check out Papa Flemmy's shop down in the description. The merch is pretty good, in my opinion. Shameless advertising at the beginning of the video. Hmm. Last time we have evaluated one integral definition of the Euler Macaroni constant. Today we are going to take a look at this thing right here, yet another Putnam axiom question. And yeah, it might seem easy at first sight, but you have to do some basic algebraic manipulation to arrive at the answer that we are after. And if I still have some time left and I'm going to do a little generalization for this thing, or I'm going to put it in a separate video, that's probably better putting it in a separate video. Let us go ahead and get started. So, what we could do, we could bring this x to the front to clear out the area a bit, and then we could factor out the negative one to get one over one minus e to the x, and that absolutely screams for geometric series. Bad thing is, it doesn't converge on this interval. So it's not in our interval of validity. So we have to do more work. Blah. Yeah, and that's what we are doing now. So why not multiply top and bottom by e to the negative x? We can do this. It's a limit process and algebraic manipulation is allowed in limit processes. We are going to get an integral from 0 to infinity of x times, and I'm going to bring this x to the front just so you can see it a bit better, e to the negative x over, okay, e to the x times e to the negative x, that's a nice little function equation in the real and complex numbers, it's going to give us 1 as a matter of fact, minus e to the negative x, a dx. Okay, we are kind of at the geometric series. Kind of. So the cool thing is we actually brought this right here in the form of a geometric series, but we still have this term up here. What I would like to do is to add a zero up here in the numerator. We can do this. So if you have an apple and you don't add another apple to it, <laughs> I hope you're already getting tired of this stupid ass joke. Then you are still left with this apple itself, e to negative x, our apple up here. So why not add a one and subtract it once again? Or why not subtract a one? and add it once again, just because, okay? <laughs> now we can use the additivity of the numerator to break this up into this fraction plus one over one minus e to the negative x. Overall, we are going to get an integral from zero to infinity of x. Oh, that's such a beautiful integral sign, seriously. I'm so good at drawing integral signs. We're going to have this right here. I'm going to uh, put some brackets right here. So we have e to the negative x minus 1 over 1 minus e to the negative x plus 1 over 1 minus e to the negative x dx. Closing off the bracket as they are supposed to be closed off. If we would factor out negative 1 right here, we are going to get a over a. So those are the same terms. So this is going to give us negative 1 actually integral from 0 to infinity of x times negative 1 right here and positive this chunk. Like I said, we want to turn stuff into the geometric series actually. And on this interval, it's from 1 to 0 in this case, if you consider it on e to the negative x and that's valid, we can actually turn this into a series running from k equals to 0 to infinity of e to the negative k times x, so that's e to the negative x to the kth power, but yeah, using the fact that it's multiplicative, our exponent e to the negative k times x. Okay, so we have positive sum running from k equals to zero to infinity of e to the negative k times x dx. You can probably make this algebraic manipulation a bit shorter in this whole stuff, but just for clarification purposes, I just want to uh, write out the stuff as much as I can, just so that it's really clear to you guys. What about dragging this zeroth term to the outside, okay? 
we can just break the summation up, why not? If we plug zero into here, that's just a one. Okay, one minus one is going to give us zero. So this and the zero of term is going to cancel out, so our sum actually starts from one. And then we have this chunk right here, x times this infinite summation. We can bring the x to the inside, it's just a constant with respect to k, that works. And under the condition that our integrand is strictly positive, on this interval it's completely strictly positive, we can actually Fubini this shit. So interchanging this infinite summation, this limit and this limit right here. We're going to get some running from k equals to 1 to infinity of an integral from 0 to infinity of x times e to negative k times x integrated with respect to x. And this right here looks like a beautiful individual. Spoiler alert, this is just a gamma function actually. Okay, that's gamma of 2. Gamma function of 2 is nothing but 1 factorial. We don't give a shit about that. Also, it's kind of something different because of this k up here. I just want to do this elementary right now. Doing integration by parts because x goes to 0 pretty fast. It's the recursive definition of the gamma function, doing integration by parts repeatedly to get the gamma function with respect to itself. Okay, never mind. So we are going to differentiate something and integrate something, plus, minus, plus, two iterations. Differentiating x gives us 1 and then 0, so that, that's quite nice. Integrating e to the negative k times x is actually quite easy. Negative 1 over k, e to the negative k times x, and then yet again 1 over k squared, e to the negative k times x. Multiplying this together, this together, and applying the limits respectively, and then we are basically done. Sum running from k equals to 1 to infinity of, okay, I'm going to put it here in brackets, we are going to get negative x over k, and I'm going to put this in the denominator down here, so this is nothing but 1 over e to the k times x, from 0 to infinity, and then we are going to get negative e to the negative k times x over k squared, from 0 to infinity. Let's focus on the zero parts at first, at least on here. If we plug zero into here, it's going to vanish just because of this x up here. That's good. Then we're going to take the limit as x approaches infinity. That's an infinity over infinity situation. I only said it verbally in the last few videos, but we are just going to use Papa L'Hopital now for a second. I just want to show you that this is indeed true, that, that the exponential function grows way faster. So let's consider the limit as x approaches infinity of, let's just put it simple, x over e to the k times x. Okay, now k is a finite value, it's just a positive integer, so, so that's fine, it really doesn't cause any problems. Now we can use Papa L'Hopital because that's infinity over infinity, meaning we are going to differentiate the numerator and the numerator, uh, denominator separately. Up here we are going to get 1 <laughs> over k times e to the k times x. And if we let x now approach infinity, that's 1 over infinity, k is like I said just a positive integer, and that goes to 0 in the limit. Okay, for x to infinity. With that out of the way, this right here is successfully going to vanish. If we let x approach infinity on here, well, it doesn't cause any problems because that's 1 over infinity in this case, it's just 0. Second part of integration tells us that we have negative, and negative is going to cancel out, so that's positive, e to the zero of power is just one, so we are going to get positive one over k squared. So we have a sum running from k equals to one to infinity of one over k squared. And here we go again, my boys, yet another integral definition of our good old basal problem. I've done this using Fourier series, but this right here is going to evaluate to pi squared over six. And this is, uh, I fucking hate you, uh, it's disgusting, disgusting. This is actually quite good. Um, yeah, I hope you did enjoy this video. I would like to thank my sponsors a little bit. Lichtenau, fresh and fruity, no, I'm just thirsty. To be honest, I, I really don't have a sponsor right now, I guess. 
can just watch me drink some stuff. Um, yeah. Thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe and recommend the channel if you like. What I said before, just as a little clarification purpose, did we even use the second child board? No. It, yeah, we, we did, but that's such a small problem. It's really fucking terrible. What you can do, you can actually make a little change of variable right here. So um, let's put it here. Let's just take a look at this real quick. So we are going to have some running from k equals to 1 to infinity, integral from 0 to infinity of, well, x times e to negative k times x dx. What we can do, let t be equal to k times x, okay? Also meaning that dt is nothing but, um, yeah, k times dx. k is just a positive integer, not starting at 0, that's quite good. So we can divide both sides by k also on here and we can plug the stuff into here actually so we have the sum right here from one to infinity okay applying our up and lower bounds still goes from zero to infinity and then we have um t over k tko have you played checkbox party pack four it's pretty quite cool and then we have e to the negative t power and then we have dt over k Okay, so we have this 1 over k squared term, just like we did with um, this integration by parts. I hope that's not boring, I just won't clarify what I said before. 1 over k squared, coolio, then integral from 0 to infinity of t times e to the negative t dt. You can use integration by parts, or you can make use of the fact that this right here is just gamma of 2. Um, I have to think about it, if we take a look at the gamma function, gamma of s for example, it's nothing but um, integral from 0 to infinity. I have derived it before. Take a look at this video, it's pretty fucking dope using Laplace transforms and Feynman integration shit like this. Such a cool way. Um, x to the s minus 1 power or t whatsoever times e to the negative um, x dx. Okay, so you see it's of that form and if we plug s being equal to 2 into here we actually end up with our t to the first power. So that's just gamma of 2 and by definition gamma of s is nothing but s minus 1 factorial. Okay, so we are actually going to end up with 1 factorial just as a little matter of fact. So this is 1 factorial and this right here, yeah, it's our basal problem but it's also our um, zeta of 2. I'm terribly sorry for this ugly looking zeta function. And like I said, I would like to generalize this result a bit more. This just gives you a little idea what I'm doing in the next video and why I'm doing it exactly. But yeah, <laughs> that, that's it, just a basic problem. Like I said, if you did enjoy the video, please like and subscribe to my comment channel. If you like, don't forget to buy the merch I created or support channel on Patreon. Take a look at my second channel. I'm doing gaming live streams there and stuff like this. And up until the next video, have a flammable day. See ya. So the dogs are going to see a vacuum robot huh, for the first time. His name is Oifi. I wanted to call him Dieter, but it's Oifi now. Akiro in dein Korb.